Congress is under pressure to extend the CARES Act before it expires at the end of next month. Tens of millions of workers who were let go because of the pandemic are now weighing their options for going back to work. And some local business owners say that extra $600 a week on top of state benefits has actually become a disincentive for reopening the economy. Nicole Kreitz is joining us now live. And Nicole, a lot of local retailers and restaurants, they say they're having a tough time hiring people. They sure are, Chris. Risk of exposure is one thing, and supplements making unemployment more lucrative than going back to work is another. One employer said a dishwasher told them point blank, why would I go wash, wash dishes when I could sit at home and make more than $800 a week doing nothing? Pre-COVID 2019 was our best year ever. February 2020 was our best month ever. We were on a roll. Things were going so great. Ann Siner, founder and CEO of My Sister's Closet and a chain of other consignment and charity thrift stores that shut down six weeks because of the pandemic, says 30% of her workforce has refused to return. Some are legitimate excuses, don't get me wrong, but at the same time, some flat out tell their friends, you know, I'm not gonna go back because I'm getting as much money. Or we'll see on, on social media, they're the first in line when Nordstrom's opened. Siner says with 29 million workers, retail is the largest private employer in the country, and there's no way to restart our economy if people have no incentive to come back. I thought unemployment worked in the pre-COVID days. You know, you lost your job, you got a couple hundred bucks a week, and you were incentivized to go out and look for a job. And now there's absolutely no incentive when you're getting eight or $900 a week. And it's really hard to run a business without employees. You know, I mean, we put people that basically live paycheck to paycheck, and we put them out on the street, you know, 40, what, 40 million. So I have a hard time, uh, you know, being judgmental about it. Edward Westerfield co-owns the Irish Wolfhound Pub, a popular Packers bar and restaurant in Surprise. He doesn't begrudge anyone getting extra emergency benefits, but says it is most certainly hurting companies trying to reopen and locally owned restaurants more so than retail or chains. Revenues down 75 percent and they haven't had any takers on job openings in more than a month. A lot of our staff said they don't want to come back because they're afraid to be exposed to the public like that. So we actually lost quite a few people. Westerfield's also an anesthesiologist with more than 30 years in health care, so he knows the risk of having to shut down again because of an exposure or second wave is real. He's just hoping his business and others can beat the odds. It's the first time we've ever crashed the economy because of an epidemic and a virus. And so I think everybody, and I'll, I'll give some, you know, some politicians a pass on that, we're feeling our way around because... You know, it's been four or five hundred years since society's dealt with a worldwide pandemic. Yeah, he says there's really no roadmap here. He says we have to keep our eyes focused on the big picture and try as best we can to stay calm. Not an easy task. And remember, we survived polio back in the 50s. And eventually, he says, we will get through this, too. OK, Nicole, but if those extra payments end on July 31st, we're going to have 40 million workers competing for fewer jobs. Yeah, that's the reality. And another reason why Ann says, while today's job offer might mean less money than the boosted benefits you might be getting right now, you should really seriously consider the long-term benefits. Lots of companies like hers, My Sister's Closets and others, are offering health insurance, paid vacation, holidays, 401k, and you're not getting any of that when you're on an unemployment. Back to you.